Hello, welcome to another edition of Dwayne Allen Guitar Concepts. It's been a while since I've seen you all last, but here I am again, ready to give you some more information in the world of guitar and jazz guitar. Um, I wanted to take a moment to thank all of you. I noticed the last couple months I've been getting a lot more subscriptions on my uh, videos before the, this channel was kind of moving along really slowly. And in the last couple months, it feels like uh, it's really been ramping up. A lot of people are hitting the subscribe button and I really appreciate all of you who have done that. Um, you really helped me out when you're doing that. And, you know, hit the like button, the subscribe button. I'm just trying to grow this channel and get out there and get this information to as many people as possible. Um, I, I also realized that I haven't made you guys aware of my other music channel that I have called Dwayne Allen Music. So like I have two channels. This particular channel is for my guitar teaching concepts that I use. And then I have a whole other channel called uh, just Dwayne Allen Music, A-L-L-E-N Music. Um, and that one just features my playing like uh, videos of me on gigs or in my room. Or I also do a lot of gear reviews there. So if you're a gearhead, that's a good place to check it out. Um, so yeah, feel free to go over there. Hit subscribe over there. Um, I have a new record that's been out uh, for a little while, a couple months. It, I'm really proud of it. It's, I'm very happy with it. It's called Empty Streets. So if you like my playing at all and you like what I'm doing at all, you might want to check out my new record. It's uh, Dwayne Allen Quartet, Empty Streets. It's a really cool straight ahead jazz gr uh, record. I've got a great band, some of the top musicians in LA, guys like Josh Nelson and Dan Schnell and Carl McComas uh, Reichel. Great band, so I would highly recommend checking that out if you like modern jazz guitar. All right, so let's get to it. So this is a lesson for those of you who are intermediate jazz guitar players, kind of new to jazz and just getting into it. And it's kind of a part two video for, it's, I did one of my earliest jazz videos was um, how to learn how to play with a swing rhythm and basically how to play over a blues and sound more like a jazz guitar player than a rock guitar player. So like a jazz player, we focus much more on rhythm and swinging and using the blues scale to play jazz. So like if I was gonna put on a, a blues progression like this, it'd be instead of playing this way, you know, with all the vibrato and stuff, it's gonna be much more swing based. So like in this video, I was using only the blues scales and I was only swinging. So it's kind of like this. videos that I did where I talked about how to learning how to swing and all that okay so let's take this up another notch so I want to teach you guys the idea of using chord tone soloing over a blues so I'm using the same simple one four five blues progression in B flat that I used last time I may have been in G last time but today we're in B flat so what we're gonna do is one of the things that separates jazz guitar players from blues guitar players and the way they approach a blues is jazz guitar players tend to play much more chord tones and more scales as the chords change as opposed to like a blues guitar player they might play the the b flat pentatonic or the b flat blues scale the entire time over the whole progression now jazz guitar players use that scale too but they do other things which is this what we call this chord tone soloing now there's more to it than that. If you transcribe a, a jazz blues solo by somebody like a Grant Green or a Kenny Burrell or a Wes Montgomery, what you're gonna find if you learn their solos is they're doing a combination of many things. So they're playing like the chord tones of each chord. They're playing like the modes, like Mixolydian modes. They're playing some chromatic tones, some altered tones. Those are all things that all jazz guitar players use. But this one concept, if you get really good at doing this one concept, it's going to make you much stronger and ready to take care of all the other things that we were just talking about. So what does that mean, chord tone soloing? All it means is, is you learning the arpeggios of each of the chords of a B-flat blues. So in other words, you learn a B-flat dominant 7 arpeggio, E-flat dominant 7 arpeggio, and an F dominant 7 arpeggio. Now, I'm not here to really teach you the actual arpeggio per se, but I'm just, I'm going to play it 
kind of quickly and if you pick it up that's great but so what you want to do first is you want to learn the b flat dominant seven arpeggio so you would learn let's say the sixth position you'd learn this arpeggio and then you learn how to play an e flat dominant seven arpeggio which there's one right next to it which could be this one and then there's an f dominant seven arpeggio we just do the same thing as e flat go up two frets Okay, so those are only three arpeggios, actually only two forms that you need to know. Now, by the way, this is in one position. When I teach my private students, they have to be able to do this in any position and in any key, which that's a whole other thing. But um, so what you do is you learn the arpeggios well by yourself, you know, just learn the fingering, get the sound in your head. The next thing you should do is practice playing these arpeggios along with the backup tracks of a blues progression. I'm using iReal Pro behind me, okay? So so I'm gonna play the arpeggios up and down until they change. And this is a great way to work on your swing feel and to incorporate the arpeggios. This is just an exercise though, I'm not improvising yet. So something like this. So B flat seven. exercise for you to work on where you get used to switching the arpeggios when the chords switch. That's what jazz players often do is they'll, they'll address each chord individually as opposed to one scale the whole time. Okay, so you should do that kind of an exercise before you start improvising on this. Okay, now one thing that you want to try to get good at is when you're going up and back Whenever the next chord switches, you want to try not to have to go, like I think I at one point I was doing like this, for B flat. And then when E flat hit, I jump to the, to the root of the E flat. I jump, right? You want to be able to do this with a, a concept that a lot of people call weaving. So you're going up one, and then when the next chord hits, you're, you're kind of going backwards on that next chord. So you're always moving in the same direction. When a great jazz player is improvising, their line doesn't get broken because of the chord change. Their line just continues to move in the same directions. It's very hard to do, it takes a lot of practice. One way to get good at doing weaving, actually, is to do the arpeggios backwards, like this. That's gonna help you. So this is what weaving looks like. So I'm going to always try to keep the same direction going. Here's B flat. Setting up for E flat. There it is. B flat. Same direction. F. E flat. B flat. See how I did that? a great way to practice because that way you're always moving in the same direction you get the line moving like this right okay these are great things to practice to help you when you go to improvise so now let's improvise so I'm gonna use those same arpeggios the whole point of all this is to be musical and to groove and make it sound like like something that people want to listen to this is an exercise but you should always be musical all the time right so I'm gonna play a solo what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play very simple and I'm gonna try to be musical and I'm gonna try to groove. Don't feel like you have to play all the notes of the arpeggio all the time, you don't have to. The no, all those notes, the flurry of notes, here's all the B flat notes, here's all the E flat notes. Those are just notes that you can pick and choose and use however much, as much or as little as you want. Think of it as like a roadmap, okay? So I'm gonna call the chords out and you're gonna see I'm gonna play very simple, okay? So here's B flat. Flat. See how the chord switches there? F. E flat. B flat. Still on 
B flat. trying to make it musical make it groove you know and make it get a good sound but all I played was chord tones that was all I played okay so it's a really great way for you to learn how to how to milk the changes of a tune you should be able to do this on standards too and I've done this on a couple standards I think I did the song all the things you are right now once you learn it in one position, you should do it in another. So like, for instance, like there's a third position where you do the B flat pinky version here. And then E flat pinky version here. Let's try that one. So you can learn a different position, right? position then you do then you you get good at that position then you try like the eighth or the seventh and you try the tenth the whole goal is when you're improvising you can just flow all over the whole neck so you want to be able to mix all the different positions together but the lines have to take you there naturally so I mean, something like this take you and I still only played chord tones arpeggio tones same exact thing right now does, is this the way jazz guitar players solo no this is like a limited way of doing it but you're 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 isolating the chord tones when a jazz guitar player is playing he's doing a combination of chord tones and then if you want to incorporate scales then what you would do is you do B flat mixolydian E flat mixolydian Mixolydian, right? So you're kind of doing mostly chord tones, some of the Mixolydians, but then what guys will do is then they'll throw in some chromatic tones. So I'm going to do one more chorus and I'm going to be playing a lot of chord tones, but I'm going to be throwing in some of the, the um, uh, Mixolydian scales and some passing tones. And now it's going to sound a lot more like a jazz guitar solo. Let's check this out. Oh, I forgot, you can always use the blues scale as, as any time. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
right? Something like that. So that's when I mixed it all together. But by doing these chord tone soloing exercises, they really set you up for mixing it all together. So the way you really, the next thing you really want to do when you're learning this stuff is you just got to transcribe. I talk about that all the time. You should learn solos. I love learning solos by Grant Green. I do a um, analysis of a jazz solo video on one of his blues solos in the key of B flat. Look up that video because I, I teach it and I talk about what he's doing. And what he's doing is a combination of chord tones and scales. That's what they do. So learn a lot of jazz blues solos, Kenny Burrell, um, Grant Green, George Benson, although Benson's pretty hard, he's a burner, but um, Wes Montgomery, Joe Pass, I mean, any of the greats, Jim Hall, Pat Martino, on and on and on, Tal Farlow, they're all great. And by the way, you should learn, you know, Miles solos or Coltrane or Bird, you know, just easy stuff like that. <laughs> this is hard stuff. It takes a long time, but it's worth it if you love the music. So, Anyway, once again, I wanted to thank all of you for subscribing. So um, please check out my other channel, Dwayne Allen Music. And um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you did, uh, leave a comment. I haven't been answering all the comments. I'm sorry. I, I you know, have to make a living doing other things. But I get back to here as soon as I can. As always, if you really want to learn this stuff, you should take private lessons with someone. I offer private lessons. I do it online and it, it works out great. A YouTube video can't tell you what you're doing wrong. That's why this is all limiting. You know, if you really want to learn, you need to work with someone who can listen to you and help evaluate your playing. So if you're interested in private lessons with me, hit me up. I'd love to work with you. I work with people around the world. Okay. All right. Have a great night and we'll see you next time.